how to sleep with level scoliosis. First of all, we have to understand what is scoliosis. Scoliosis is the development of an unnatural sideways spinal curvature. The unnatural curvature has a rotational component, making it a three-dimensional condition, meaning the spine actually has a turn and a bend as well. Normally the twist or the turn is into the concavity of the curvature. The curve has to be a minimum size in a Cobb angle measurement of 10 degrees or get greater to be diagnosed with scoliosis. A Cobb angle is a measurement taken during a scoliosis x-ray. Most scoliosis x-rays are taken as the patient is standing, and the x-ray is either taken through the front or through the back of the body, and the patient's Cobb angle tells you how large the scoliosis is and where in the spine where, where it falls. Cobb angles are normally cl will help classify the scoliosis based upon severity, meaning whether it's a mild scoliosis, moderate scoliosis, severe, or, or something I like to use, very severe scoliosis. Um, these curvatures are normally 10 to 25 degrees is mild, 25 degrees to 40 is moderate, 40 degrees or greater is severe, 80 plus is something that I call very severe scoliosis. And again, this is relationship to the Cobb angle. The scoliosis is classified as a result of helping us diagnose and classify scoliosis treatments to help streamline what's going to be best for that person in terms of crafting an effective treatment plans and really dictating or de developing a prognosis pattern where how well patients respond to care based upon the classification we see. Classifications can dictate many scoliosis points, whether scoliosis is more of a typical kind of curvature, something that we typically see, or this is an atypical type of curvatures, meaning atypical scoliosis cases may have other things associated with the scoliosis than just the scoliosis. And when we look at these different types, the most prevalent type is something called adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. The adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, meaning that scoliosis is diagnosed in the adolescent time of, of, of the patient. Idiopathic means unknown curve, and scoliosis, of course, means 10 degrees or greater. 80% of all classes are classified, 80% of all cases are classified as idiopathic scoliosis, meaning there's no known cause. And even though idiopathic scoliosis, we don't know the cause, they're considered to be a typical type of curve, meaning it's a typical classification. The remaining 20% of scoliosis cases are associated with known causes and may be considered atypical. A neuromuscular case, neuromuscular scoliosis when the patient has a neuromuscular condition, something like Marfan's, something like a cerebral palsy, Ehlers Downer syndrome, and some other type of neuromuscular problem that could be leading to the scoliosis. Congenital scoliosis is when a patient has something congenitally wrong with their spine. It developed in utero and is where the spine, one of the spinal bones didn't develop properly and led into scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is normally a result of misalignments in the spine that have caused accelerated degeneration in that area, which leads to scoliosis. And then the last one is traumatic scoliosis, is when a patient goes through some type of trauma, either externally, internally, some kind of severe car accident or injury or some kind of internal trauma, like some kind of compression fracture or cancer within the body or spine that's causing the spine to deteriorate, become, going through trauma in that area. These things can normally be diagnosed as an atypical scoliosis because they lead to atypical types of curves meaning as a curve occurs during growth in adolescent, the curves tend to bend a certain way and they look a certain way. However, if curves bend in different directions or in different areas, they can be also classified as atypical. Now, another type of classification is something called level scoliosis or dextroscoliosis. What's the difference between a level scoliosis and a dextroscoliosis? A level scoliosis means that the adnatural curvature is, is bending to the left. Now, bending to the left in the lumbar spine is a very typical pattern, but bending to the left in the thoracic spine is an atypical pattern because that's normally bending towards the heart. And when most pa when patients are going through growth and they're developing the scoliosis, the body normally in an idiopathic manner will move the spine away from the heart. So normally most the most thoracic curves are direct dextroscoliosis, meaning they bend to the right, away from the heart. So a right bending curvature in the thoracic spine is very typical, but a right bending curvature in the lumbar spine isn't as typical or as common. So in cases of level scoliosis in the thoracic spine, this can be a red flag. This can mean that it could be possibly be an underlying pathology or it could be something else that's going on within the spine it, itself that is leading to the curvature. So normally when we see things like this, we normally recommend MRIs or look for other type of testing to see if there's anything else occurring into this person's body that's possibly leading to this scoliosis. 
idiopathic scoliosis is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning you have to exclude everything else, and if you don't find anything else, you call it idiopathic. You don't assume it's idiopathic scoliosis and then say, okay, now, you know, now let's go look for other things. So it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Now, if somebody has a level of scoliosis, what's the best way for them to sleep? Well, the best sleep positions for patients with level of scoliosis are the same for people with or without scoliosis, meaning normally sleeping flat on the back is the best way to help keep the spine as aligned as possible. There is no left side sleeping or right side sleeping that's gonna possibly reduce your curve. I get asked that question a lot. Well, I have a right curve or a left curve. Should I sleep on my left or my right side? We really don't know. In fact, in, in most cases, you have S curves. And if you sleep on one position to make one curve better, it's more likely making one, one the other one worse. So laying flat in the back is by far the best thing that we recommend for patients to lay flat in the back. And normally with some type of pillow that's supporting the natural curve in the neck. So normally it's a smaller pillow or some type of molded pillow or fitted pillow for your cervical spine. The very next best position is going to be on the slot on the side and normally we recommend putting something between the knees to help facilitate normal hip alignment so your hips aren't rotating and twisting while you're sleeping. So we want something to kind of hold your hips in a proper alignment and by far the worst position to sleep is on your stomach. This is this sleeping on your stomach naturally arches the low back. You have to turn your neck into an unhealthy position. Outside of following these normal rules, the, the best way for patients with scoliosis to sleep is in their scoliosis corrective brace. So many patients, we will build them a corrective brace so they can sleep in it. It helps push on their spine while they're sleeping and acts in a corrective manner while they're sleeping. So there's no better way to sleep with scoliosis other than sleeping in a corrective brace. So if you have uh, or been designed a corrective brace for your scoliosis, that's by far the best position to sleep. But outside of that, there's no position that has the power to change scoliosis. We don't believe scoliosis occurs because of bad sleep posture, so it can't be corrected because of good sleep posture. Sleep positions can help keep your spine in a better, more neutral alignment, but it's not gonna reduce the scoliosis that's developing in adolescence or it has developed in the adult stage. So the best way to sleep with, with scoliosis for one patient is the best way that they can sleep to get a good night's sleep. Sleep by far is extremely important to creating an environment of healing within the body that's helping uh, helping restoration and also patients who sleep res well respond better to our treatment. So therefore, finding a, the right sleep position for you may could be assisted with scoliosis treatment, meaning as we can reduce your curve, you may find sleep positions more comfortable because as your curve gets smaller, you have more even forces within your body, maybe more comfortable sleeping on your, on your back. So therefore, finding the most comfortable sleep position could be helped as a result of your scoliosis treatment. So therefore, we recommend if you're having problems sleeping and you think it's related to your scoliosis, we definitely recommend that you treat the scoliosis, see if, you're, if your sleep patterns will improve. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.